Hello everybody, it is your faithful Captain Carlisle here once again to make a video about some controversial subjects, topics, matters, and uh, I'm just getting adjusted. I know I could do it beforehand, but I'm gonna do it now. How about that? Anywho, so this is gonna be a video about the Nephilim. And for those of you that um, are interested in archaeology, anthropology, etc., etc., um, ancient archaeology, um, as well as uh, what else is there? As well as religion, um, then you are aware of the Nephilim. The Nephilim are giants. They are. <laughs> Uh, the children of man and fallen angels, um, which is kind of crazy to me upon doing research. It's like, how do angels and humans spawn giant people? <laughs> like, how is that a thing where, you know, how? I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, um, I basically would just like to say that, again, Reality is definitely stranger than thick fiction. My old lisp from when I was younger is coming back. Fiction. <laughs> um, so reality is definitely stranger than fiction. And I say this because there are several giant skeletons that have been found around the world that have been reported to the Smithsonian Museum, but they have gone missing right after that. You don't see these skeletons in any exhibits whatsoever. So, uh, there are also um, caves and tombs with giant, giant skeletons that have been mummified and giant skeletons that have been found in these caves uh, that could possibly be from the pre-flood era. And if many of you are hyper, hyper scientific minded people, it's about time that you realize that if you want to be even more knowledgeable about science, then it's time to take into consideration uh, the spiritual aspect of things, the fictitious aspect of reality that is extremely probable. Okay? So, if you do not believe in the Great Flood, I would like to, I would like for you to consider this. Then, if the, the Great Flood did not exist, did not happen, then why is the same exact story about the Great Flood prominent around the entire planet? Why are there stories about people talking about the Great Flood in Brazil, in North America, in Noah's Ark, and even in China? Why are there stories about the Great Flood during a time where there are possibly no modern communication technologies that we are not aware of? Why? When at the time, uh, tablets, tablet scribes are, you know, what we know of as, you know, communication, as uh, history being recorded. Why? Why is that story retold all around the world? And uh, another thing is, um, for those of you, again, that are not, that are anti-religious and any sorts of ways that are anti-Christian, um, that do not believe that Noah's Ark existed, I would like for you to look up the modern day re re restructuring of Noah's Ark. There is a Noah's Ark now that has been rebuilt. And I believe it's going to be a pilgrimage site for many different religious people. Stop it. No. 
Get out of there. Okay. Just trying to sit on my artwork. Uh. Anywho, there is <laughs> Noah's Ark. Uh, it's in the east side of the United States. It's been rebuilt. Um, yeah, so how is it that with the instructions on how to build Noah's Ark that are located in the Bible, how is it that there is a Noah's Ark that has been rebuilt that uh, emulates the actual Ark? It is so great, it is so fantastic that it would make any person think, you know, maybe there is something else going on here. So, yeah. How about you chew on that? Now, the thing, the reason why I bring up the Nephilim is because I've been having a feeling that I have a connection to these Nephilim sort of entities for some reason or another, possibly sharing a slight fraction of their blood. Um, that's the feeling that I'm getting. And also, like, past life reincarnation. I am positive that at one point I was a Nephilim and I did consume human flesh. Um... And I say this because I, I am aware that I have not always been subscribing to the light side of life. That I am aware that I have done some dark things in the past. I have just been wondering what were those things. And I've come across Nephilim. I've been doing a lot of research. And for the reason that I'm so enamored by them, I've come to this conclusion. Um, and why is, why is it actually important that I talk about the Nephilim with you? Well, what is talked about, and I like to look at prophecies from all around the world, but especially the culture that I'm from, Christianity, and, uh, you know, Christianity is very much so talked about from where I am from. So I am now considering even more so what these prophecies have to say. So... The prophecy, basically, that is talked about is that the end times are near uh, when, basically, we are in the days that are just like the days prior to Noah's flood. To, sorry, to the, the great flood, to Noah's ark. And that is when the Nephilim were, basically, taking over the entire planet. That's when the Nephilim reigned free. And there is a lot of evidence of this, that um, they have reigned free, like I said, from the skeletons. But also, the this is something I've come across, these giant tree stumps. This is a very, very, very interesting topic, but there are a lot of artifacts on this planet are more like um, geographic monuments that we see as basically uh, interesting structures to look at. Um, so what I'm trying to say here is that there are evidence of giant tree stumps that have been, uh, what's the word? They have mineralized basically over time. So they are more in a rock sort of form rather than an organic uh, biological plant eye sort of form uh, because uh, several thousands of years have passed since these trees were actually uh, alive and also at one point in time in the past if we know that dinosaurs were great large creatures and the plant and a lot of life was also large at that point in time um, that's because mainly there was a an abundance of carbon in the air uh, that, that promoted the growth of these organisms. So the atmosphere is now about here. The atmosphere at one point was a lot uh, farther out. And trees, plants, everything, animals, they could grow to great, great heights. Um, but that is not to say that uh, everything, including just human beings, you know, everything including human beings were super large now where I'm going with this um, is you know like I said the 
it is so it is told that in these prophecies that when the days are much like the the days prior to the flood then we are in the end times yet again and there are many accounts of actual live giants and there are live giants walking around amongst us and the gene of these giants uh, presents itself in people in such a way where the person will have six digits on each hand. Uh, this is a very, very main factor. So even if they are not tall, they may be born with six digits on each hand. And this is a funny thing that I came across that somebody pointed out about the Rio Olympics, that the Rio Olympics actually highlighted a a, a family of people that had six digits on each hand. This was an entire family from mother, father to children. They all had six digits on each hand. So they carried the gene of the Nephilim clearly in their hands, in their body, even though they might have not been tall. But there are also accounts, like I said, of people uh, with Nephilim, with tall people that are really only twice their size or one and a half times their size. Um, and these also are the descendants of the Nephilim. And there are accounts of Nephilim actually being found in caves alive today. That, uh, for example, in Afghanistan, there was a Nephilim that was found in Afghanistan by soldiers, American U.S. soldiers, that was killed on sight. <laughs> and the remains, well, they were taken elsewhere, and so who knows what happened to that giant after that point. Now, this, a lot of people have been talking about how the end is near, the end is near. Well, this is another sort of sign that is prophesized in the Christian religion, that, you know, when the Nephilim are here again, and when they, when they reign as they did before, then we are near the end. So that's just an interesting topic. Um, and, you know, something that has also made me really want to talk about this topic is that actually in Japanese culture, as of late in anime, they have been making animes about these giants, about the titans, about uh, the Avas. If you have seen Evangelion, they have Avas. And the people that pilot these Avas, these giant mecha-like beings, they wonder, what am I really piloting? And uh, spoiler alert, if you have never seen Evangelion, uh, basically they are piloting Avas. They, they, the Avas are giants. They're titans. And so... Also, Attack on Titan very recently has brought back the topic of the Titans. And, excuse me, the aspect about these Titans, about, oh, excuse me, about these, about these Nephilim, the aspect that is shown in both of these animes is that these giants are cannibals. They eat the flesh of other giants. They eat the flesh of human beings. <laughs> and that is what is talked about in Attack on Titan. So I have uh, hypothesized basically that Attack on Titan, um, you know, showing the, ty the types of technology that they had in that show, um, I have the feeling that that is actually based on the pre-flood era that the attack on Titan is actually about that. Um, that's just my guess um, because I can see that actually being a real thing where at one point um, at in some isolated landmass that these people were so isolated um, because of the Titans that they could not reach contact with any other civilizations outside of their area. Um, so it is quite possible that, you know, while Atlantis, while Lemuria was up and while Dwarka was up, that 
at this point in time that, you know, there could have been civilizations that were so isolated because they couldn't handle the Titans um, that, you know, they couldn't be in contact with anyone. So uh, I believe that's all I have for tonight. Um, so thank you for watching. If you have any comments about this topic, please do comment. Um, any differing viewpoints, I would love to see that. Uh, please keep it constructive down there, all right? Like, come on. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. All right. So, um, yeah, if you liked it, you like it. If this is beneficial for other people um, that you know, share it. <laughs> Um, all right, so, yeah, what else? Uh, okay, so a couple of announcements here. Um, if you are interested in some of my artwork, uh, 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 there it is. All right, I have an art piece up for sale on my Etsy page. Um, I don't have it sitting next to me, so, um, where do I? <laughs> I have some artwork on my Etsy. I have some artwork on my Etsy page. Come with me. Here it is. Ah, this is the art piece that I have up on my Etsy page. Um, if you are interested in buying this art piece, it's in the 400s range. Uh, so if you got that extra dough um, for show, please don't be afraid to buy this art piece. Bonus if you uh, are an international buyer, because I have free international shipping to anybody um, outside of the U.S. Uh, for this reason, I, I, I'm doing this for the reason that I would like to get my artwork out into the world. Like, out. <laughs> but otherwise, the shipping's like 30-ish 30, 30 dollars for anybody in the United States. Uh, also, if you would like to see what I am blogging about um, on my blogs, I will have links for that below. Um, I recently have made a template that you can send to a lot of big corporations asking them to change the sort of packaging that they're using um, in order for it to be more biodegradable. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, there's some other things. I'm, like, pretending to yawn. <laughs> I, I just realized that. I'm not even yawning. All right, and then here's Kyoko. All right, so I'll see you in the future.